Hey folks, I'm Miles Davis, a technical marketing engineer at Cisco. And today I'm here to talk about virtualization in the Colo or CNF using Cisco Secure Agile Exchange. So Tony was here a little bit earlier talking about uh, Cisco's overall network function virtualization story. And this is a little bit of a zoom in on a piece of that story, specifically Secure Agile Exchange. So I'm going into the bits and bytes, but I first want to hear from you guys, do we understand the why of Secure Agile Exchange? Uh, did you get enough of that information from Tony when we first kind of went through it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah, so we're comfortable agreed. with that. So let's do the how of, of Secure Agile Exchange, right? Because his conversation was a little bit abstracted. So there's four pieces that I kind of consider as the main components to Secure Agile Exchange. And that's really first the CSP2100, which is essentially a hypervisor for VNFs. Now, Matt talked a little bit about uh, NFVIS as the software, and he talked about the ability for us to run that NFVIS software on UCSCs, the you know big rack mount servers. And essentially, this is the same thing, right? It's, it's the uh, pre-packaged set of hardware that, that is NFVIS running on a UCSC. So, and, and we've already kind of called it out a couple times, but I'll call it out one more time. The CSP2100 uses NICs that support SRIOV, so you get that performance. The other thing that we're gonna be adding into the CSP2100 uh, shortly is essentially the ability to offload some of the crypto functions, so more hardware acceleration on that thing. Um, and then finally, the important part to know, and, and maybe somebody mentioned this before, but I wanna call it out again, is that uh, one of the, the really cool things we've done with the CSP2100 is we've enabled uh, CLI, GUI, and an API such that folks that are used to those CLIs and comfortable with them can still continue to configure this hypervisor like they would a network device. Uh, but we also have the GUI for those that like to clicky clicky. And then finally, for those that are ready to actually automate and configure, you can do that with an API. Are those all still API calls anyway? Uh, so underneath, it actually uses part of our TLF acquisition, you know, now uh, CompD and, and NSO. Okay. So it's actually using that in the subsystem to, you know, change out everything to the central database. Um, so the next part, and, and this has already been touched on as well, so I won't dive too deeply, but Essentially, we've got uh, both support for Cisco VNFs, of course, but also the third-party VNFs that uh, that Mr. Faulkner called out. So, you know, what the, the only thing that I'll kind of say here is that we've got a focus on virtual at Cisco. That's definitely something that we're looking into. Um, and then we've also got the consistent behavior between the software and the hardware platforms, and, and Matt called that out as well. Uh, the next part that you have to understand that's important about Secure Agile Exchange, uh, which we haven't really dove into, so I get to be net new on this, is uh, Secure Agile Exchange because the scale at which we'll operate this solution requires uh, a switching fabric, right? And you'll kind of find out how this thing pieces together later on. But essentially, uh, we need a switching fabric to be able to stitch these VNFs into meaningful sets of service chains. Um, and the, the real benefit of Cisco is we have a, a lot of uh, uh, capabilities when it comes to switching fabrics. So we've got a fabric that's VNF ready and we can scale from large to small deployments. Finally, uh, open orchestration. So one of the things that Matt called out as well is within these solutions, it's very likely that customers are gonna have to consume more than just Cisco products, right? So we don't wanna just orchestrate Cisco products. We wanna reach outside of that and be able to orchestrate third party uh, products. So when we talk about Secure Agile Exchange, one of the kind of key pieces that, that comes into focus and is really important is the orchestration, the automation of not only the hypervisor platform, not only the flexible switching fabric, but also the actual VNFs underneath. And that's why we, we need the third party support. Um, and really the, the reason why we have this or open orchestration platform is because we the, the benefit that Secure Agile Exchange brings you is the ability to repeatedly build service chains such that you can connect these different parts of the network. Questions here before I move on from this slide. Okay, so let's talk about the switching fabric. Uh, you know, no switching fabric is complete without a cloud under it. Not too exciting here. Now, if you look here, right, I, this is looking extremely like a regular old data center, right? We've got the spine leaf type of switching fabric. We've got some compute under it. 
Now the biggest difference is where we used to run you know, standard applications in these compute things, we've got a hypervisor specifically built for network functions. And instead of applications being the VMs, primarily what you're gonna find on a CSP 2100 is these virtual network functions that we talked about. Now let's build that out a little bit farther. Um, you know, I've got the icon for essentially orchestration. And you can, there's a lot of dotted lines, but ultimately the thing to understand here is that in most orchestration solutions within a data center, uh, primarily you're gonna be touching the compute and maybe the switching fabric, right? Uh, the important part as we looked at Secure Agile Exchange is that we're actually reaching into, let's use data center analogy, the applications, in our case, the virtual network functions, to orchestrate the configuration and policy on those VNFs as well. Does that piece make sense? All right, so let's build out a little bit farther. I need to build a box because otherwise you wouldn't know where Secure Agile ended and where other stuff began. So uh, as Tony called out, the, the purpose of Secure Agile Exchange is to ultimately help us connect these different clouds at the edge of our network and ensure that we're applying the policy between those clouds that we need to be able to enable. So we've got a few examples of different things. Um, the other thing, I think uh, Tony talked about it a little bit, but I want to call it out again. One of the benefits of going into a carrier neutral facility or a colo like Equinix is that they have these direct peer relationships set up with cloud providers already, so you don't have to go through the pain and suffering of that. Now, whether you want to use Secure Agile Exchange in a CNF or outside of a CNF, right? that's really customer's option, customer's preference. Um, but it is really beneficial when you have that kind of direct peering relationship and fat pipe already set up for you. Um, and again, you know, this connects to more than just our IaaS and SaaS clouds. It also connects our employees at remote sites uh, and our partners in, in other places as well as mobile devices or mobile users, you know, remoting in on VPN or something of that sort. The one thing that I don't have depicted in this image is you can also connect in a private data center if you want to apply policy in front of that as well. Okay, so let's dive a little bit deeper. You know, this is really a, a look at the physical topology, right? Uh, the challenge you always have when you're doing something uh, virtual like this is that you have to go two layers deep. There's a physical look and then you've got to get into the actual logical virtual look. So let's take a look at the logical virtual look. Um, in Secure Agile Exchange, you can imagine that you've got employees here on the left side and you've got some cloud that you wanna to connect to and there's a couple applications you have over in this cloud. I think I stole this icon from some random company that does on-prem email marketing. And then of course, everybody knows SAP. So you've got those applications <coughs> running out in Azure. You wanna be able to connect your employees to that cloud. Now the challenge previously is you could just op the, open those up to the internet, but that's not really secure and you can't apply the policy that you wanna be able to apply in between there, whether it's some type of uh, security IPS, whether it's some type of proxy, you wanna do something in between your users and that cloud. So imagine connecting into Secure Agile Exchange over the WAN, you've got your kind of standard crypto tunnel that you're gonna run be between some remote site router and a hub router. So we spin up a hub router. And usually when we talk about Secure Agile Exchange, we talk about it in two sides of a conversation. You've got a consumer and a provider side of, of the conversation. And in this case, the employee is the consumer and Azure is the provider. So I also have a IaaS side of the chain, right? And within this IaaS side of the chain, right, I have depicted a firewall and an IPS. But again, depending on you know, the, the enterprise's policy, there may also be some type of uh, uh, proxy or SSL decrypt, re-encrypt, so that the enterprise can monitor the traffic going back and forth, right? So ultimately, in this end-to-end -end flow, you can see that this employee gets an end-to-end -end connection to Azure, enterprise maintains its policy still in the middle, middle there. It's beautiful. So let's move on to partners, right? Partners in the same way, right? I've got that same SAP application living up in Azure, I've got that same email marketing. Maybe I've contracted in a marketing company to help me with some of that stuff. I need to interconnect my partner. 
So let's build out that service chain, right? They've also got a, a, a tunnel in, but it's not the same tunnel as the enterprise users. You don't want to mix and max match that traffic. So you've spun up another uh, a firewall. You've spun up a, or I'm sorry, you've spun up another router to be a VPN termination point. You've got a firewall because you want to apply some additional policy to those partners. And that same IaaS chain that we had before essentially gets inserted there as a level of security between the middle of the network and the end of the network. I don't know what happened. Oh, I'm going up instead of down. So IS chain, just as before, same IS chain, but because we've got the firewall there, we can apply some policy to those partners and ultimately block the SAP application and allow that email marketing application. Is it making sense? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about uh, some of the benefits of doing this with SAE, right? Uh, one of the things that changes quite often in enterprises DMZs is connectivity to partners, right? You're onboarding partners, you're offboarding partners. Previously, what did that mean? That meant spinning VRFs, that meant spinning VLANs. You may have put extra context on your firewalls. You may have mixed and matched a bunch of ACLs into the same firewall. It becomes really, really messy, really, really quick. So instead of doing that, imagine as you add partners, you could simply add a new service chain to allow connectivity for that partner, right? I could keep adding, I could even subtract. And the nice part is when I subtract, I haven't built that policy into a firewall where I've got a bunch of existing ACLs and everything else already. The, the, the ACL and policies that I have applied to that specific partner stay with that service chain. And when I wanna blow up those VMs, I blow up those VMs and walk away from them. Good, good? Yeah. All right, so let's also talk about what I call a cloud diversification, right? The other benefit of SAE is that uh, as these clouds, uh, these different IaaS providers uh, continue to compete, you're gonna find them you know, giving out competitive prices. So for enterprises, it's really beneficial that we uh, give those folks the ability to switch between these clouds quickly. Um, previously, there were some challenges there. Uh, it's not only a challenge of doing the direct peering, which we've talked about CNFs and, and how valuable those can be in that type of situation, but let's talk about the value that SAE adds. SAE, if you've already got an IS uh, chain defined, right, just like we did with partners, you can simply apply that same set of policy to a new cloud provider and boom, all of a sudden, uh, you can have diversification between these two things, right? And now if you wanna do half of your stack in Azure, it, you know, half of it in AWS, you can accomplish that. Or if you wanna start moving all the stuff from Azure to AWS, you can accomplish that as well. and rack space. <laughs> um, so the one thing I wanna call out at the end here, and then I'd love some questions, is ultimately uh, what we've done with, with Equinix is actually build an end-to-end -end lab with this to say, uh, you know, on the far left, we've got NFVIS, which, uh, which Matt called out, right? And we've got a couple of branches running ENCS. Uh, they gave us true internet connectivity and true WAN connectivity. So we brought that into our secure agile exchange. We've applied some policy with some different VNFs in there. And then we've got that interconnected to AWS, which uh, uh, Tony talked to you about the Transit VPC solution. And we rolled out the Transit VPC solution. I think we've got East VPC, we've got um, uh, the California, uh, I'm trying to think of the AWS instance. There's a West Coast one and an Oregon one I think we're connected to, and I forget the exact names of them. But essentially, we've got those two VPCs, and then we've got an Azure VPC or the equivalent of a VPC, a private data center, which we actually run an application data backend for a web that we've got front end in, in AWS, and we're able to still maintain all that policy that enterprises would want in between. The private data centers connect through just like the previous slides with left to right flow? Correct, yeah, so, so just like we had the AWS uh, kind of connectivity, right, it's no different when we connect into a private data center. We're still able to jam in a firewall or IPS or whatever else we want to jam in there to apply for that policy. Now, is Equinix supporting this in all of their data centers or is? So Equinix has the Cloud Exchange program, as far as I understand, at the majority of their data centers. I don't think they have it supported at all, although I can put you in contact with somebody that would know. Um, from a supporting Secure Agile Exchange perspective, Right, 
we're partnering with them for the fact that they've got all this cloud connectivity, but really you could take Secure Agile Exchange anywhere you wanted to go take it, right? Um, but again, the, the power of being somewhere where they've got these you know, service providers already there and they've got the cloud connectivity already there, that's the thing we're really trying to advocate with the partnership with Equinix. Okay, thank you. Yep.